I would like to mention in this video period is Miriam Mirzakani. I could not conduct my research. None of it would be possible. I would not have formulated any of it if it weren't for her and um, her teachings. If you don't know about her background, essentially she was a staff as professor at Stanford, and she created the field of like hyperbolic topological geometry. There's several. If you read through like um, her accomplishments here in, in her career, you can see that uh, she created essentially um, the theory behind Riemannian surfaces, behind that geodesics on hyperbolic surfaces. Uh, she's the one that uh, proved that in hyperbolic certain, um, it, it, like in, in hyperbolic space, that uh, parallel lines don't intersect, um, etc. And then so I will my research to her. And with that, we come to uh, essentially what I have created here. Um, and, and again, like this is uh, completely building on Miriam Merzakani's research. Like I, I am a million percent positive she would have discovered this and, and proven these things out before me because it's just, it's it's her research. <laughs> like um, uh, So she proves that uh, within hyperbolic spaces and within topological spaces that there's there's shape that exists. Uh, and then I just take those same experiments and then I prove that uh, these models are learning on abstractions as people are pointing out more and more as I've pointed out more and more on my channel. And then so those abstractions exist in hyperbolic spaces and the models are using shape in order to change and, and uh, reshape the the shape is my it's been my hypothesis for a long time right it's been a lot of people's hypothesis for a long time the problem is is that you can't get um a model to converge like even if you just know that information right i can detect the shape i can i can do all different kinds of things with the shape but the one thing that has evaded me up until now is getting it to uh build out a model that can fully take advantage of that with 100% accuracy, um, get it to converge in every single way possible. Uh, if, if to do that would be uh, essentially proving out that um, the abstraction equals the non-abstraction, right? Um, which is like um, very significant within this. And then so uh, here is uh, essentially my on this. So what I have done um, in, in this particular instance is uh, I essentially just built a model built off of swarm algorithms and every single swarm agent is a different type of a sensor <laughs> is the best way to think of it, right? Um, I'll go here and, and, and I think the, the, this is a good visualization for it, right? So there's 16 individual swarm agents. Swarm agent zero is a frequency analyzer. Swarm agent one is a wave interference analyzer. Swarm agent two is a topological distortion analyzer. Swarm agent three is a geometric measurement analyzer. Swarm agent four is a different type of frequency analyzer, etc. And they go through and they measure different measurements. Uh, in this instance, I give them uh, in, in the environment a shape, uh, which is so... Uh, we create a structure which, uh, with a complexity of 0 0.70, a frequency of 0 0.20, and a density of 3.0. And then we essentially we have the agents go through and measure and classify the shape. Uh, what I do uniquely within this is, so this is built off of my Swarm Queen optimization. So these agents, they go through and they detect the shape. And then the Swarm Queen, who's like kind of the brain of the operations, is then trained on all of this different data. So all of these individual agents operate individually, and then they send all of this information back to the brain, the, the queen. And then the queen then takes this, and then it adjusts the its confidence in the different um, agents based off of this information. So you can see that after the first test, it moves its confidence in the frequency analyzer down. It adjust its confidence and the, the uh, wave interference way up, agent way up, topological distortion, it moves it up, uh, and then geometric measure, uh, measurement, it moves it way down. 
And so like we can see that as it goes through, it does further adjustments for these weights um, and, and its confidence in the di different individual agents as it goes through. And then our end result is something like this, where um, it has essentially decided that it really, really likes uh, wave interference. It really likes the initial measurements of a geometric measurement, but then it pushes down the, the confidence level past that. Um, and then it pushes up over time the frequency analyzer. Um, and then so what we can see, it reflects on a, mo a final model convergence of 99.75 which is uh, as close to one as you could get. If it were 1.0, there might be probably something wrong with this. So the fact that it's uh, converging so close to 1.0 and not exactly 1.000 across the board is extremely significant here. Um, it discounts error. And then we can see that we get the beautiful model of our 4D topological shape, right? So this is the, the Swarm Queen's model of that 4D shape that we inputted, and it's able to pinpoint every single part of the shape, right? It, it, it now has, with 100% confidence, essentially, this is the shape uh, that we have thrown in there. <laughs> and then so uh, from this, this is essentially um, meta learning, learning to learn, etc. cetera, right? Um, and then there's going to be people that will say that there's a differentiation between this and the human process of learning, that there's a, a, um, a an additional step in between this and reasoning thought. Uh, I would challenge those people, where does that additional step exist um, within this process? <laughs> like, uh, this process seems to me to be very straightforward into um, how it works. It's based off of uh, compression mechanics uh, and uh, manifolds and compression manifolds. And essentially, all of these things that, that are occurring within um, this digital space that we're looking at here, my hypothesis is, is that these are the same processes that occur within your brain within anything overall um, that is uh, considered and deemed um, intelligence. That what we are looking at here um, is kind of the basis uh, uh, overall of what um, intelligence is um, and that it utilizes uh, shape and um, in this instance, shape in hyperbolic environments in order to uh, converge and be able to uh, analyze the data based off of that. Uh, and as you can clearly demonstrate here, I'm able to just using this particular concept and nothing else, get a model to self-learn, self-update its weights. What you're looking at here is meta-learning, right? This is what people uh, have been striving to get a model to do. Learn to learn is learning based off of this environment and it is specifically interacting with its environment. I have literal 16 different sensors that this model is using to interact with its environment via 16 different dimensions. Uh, like this model is interacting with its environment more than you do. And so uh, based off of that information, it's able to push and, and piece all of this together. Um, and then so the last part of this, uh, Harmonic Swarm Intelligence is available. Here's the GitHub repository. It's all open source, MIT licensed. Uh, here's everything that it does. Uh, all of the key features is, again, it's a multi-sensory swarm agents. It utilizes acoustic intelligence. So that, to me, that's the missing element within this, right? What's, what's missing is I put all of this together, uh, and then I put ge like geometry plus wave resonance uh, plus uh, echolocation is the, the end result, like the one that I was missing for me, right? Um, and then so I put all of that together, and then it, it ends up being in a nice package where everything converges. We get meta-learning adaptation from it. They explore the hyperdimensional spaces in order to do it, and this is all scalable and open source, 100% free and available to use. Um, so this is, uh, here it is, <laughs> this is like um, I, a lot of areas that people have been looking for, um, both uh, like scientifically and philosophically. Um, I, here it is, I, if I was missing it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it myself. Um, but so here you go. Here's the collab notebook. Do whatever you like with all of this, right? So uh, here you go. Um, there's uh, the models are learning off a of shape. They take the topological shape and they restructure those shapes. Uh, and then you can interact and, and utilize models like swarm intelligence to uh, better interact with these shapes. And then, uh, so I guess the last thing that I'll leave you with is that, so this swarm intelligence model could run on a calculator. Um, and then if you optimized it, I would flat out imagine that this model would clock like uh, any like LM model that currently exists with anything like any task that you wanted to throw it at. Let's let's say that you like your next step was like, hey, let's perform like 
benchmark this versus um, LLM model X on Y task, I can get this to outperform it. <laughs> I, like, I guarantee you from these metrics that we're seeing here. Um, and then so, uh, and again, it, it, like the compute necessary that I would need in order to outperform it would be a calculator. So significant step forward in progress there, right? It's uh, the uh, Sam Altman dream that it's uh, all just brute force compute uh, is a lie. <laughs> and, and we know it's a lie because your brain, right? All I have to do is look at the human brain to know that that um, hype train isn't reality. Um, and then so here we go, one step closer to reality as opposed to um, fake reality. And then so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.